Hi, this is Eddie uh, of Eddie's Reef Aquarium, and today I want to bring the topic of, you might have guessed by now, substrate. On um, this IM40 that I'm about to set up, I've decided to use the Carib Sea Fiji Pink. It's a finer, greater sand than the one that I used on my little nano, which was the Ocean Direct. That sand also made by Carib Sea is a little coarser type of sand. But I've decided to go along with the Fiji Pink and check it out on this tank. Now what I'm planning on doing on this tank is basically to do a shallow uh, substrate. Now by doing a shallow substrate what you need basically is approximately one uh, pound per gallon. And that will basically will give you like about an inch and a half to two inches of sand versus a deeper sand bed. And that what you do is you more or less like uh, double it. So uh, to create like three, four to six inches of a sand bed. Now the disadvantages with the deep sand bed is that due to the fact that you're gonna have a lot of sand, then that's gonna rob you from putting um, more animals. I mean, the, the water column is, is gonna be taken up more with sand. With time, uh, it can create uh, like toxic gases and toxic wastes inside that sand and God forbid if that goes up into your water column you're gonna have a major problem that's why you would need like sand uh, surfing stars you would need gobies you would need sea cucumbers to constantly be moving the, the sand so you're, you're running that little risk most of the hobbyists that I have seen and I have check them out on YouTube and personally have seen tanks, they prefer the shallow sand bed. Uh, that's more common and actually is more natural looking than again versus the bare bottom. Bare bottoms are great for people that are planning to, let's say, to uh, make a tank of SPS uh, domination. So like a dominated SPS tank because they need more water flow, more water current. Uh, some tanks I have seen, as a matter of fact, at Worldwide Coral where I go, it's about like 20 minutes from where I live, their major humongous display that they have is all SPS and they have bare bottom. Now, what's happened in their major display is that the corals have actually grown and has covered the, the bottom. Now, that being said, you also have to be on top of it because you cannot allow any detritus to accumulate and you, and you have to be maintaining that bare bottom more frequently than actually a sand bed on any of these uh, tanks. So again, that's not to say that all SPS dominated tanks uh, don't have uh, substrate, they're only bare bottoms, no. That would be an erroneous statement. I have personally seen uh, tanks that are SPS dominated. I have seen them in YouTube and in other channels and in other um, researches that I've done on the computer and they do have a sand bed. The only thing is that they probably won't use a finer grain like the Fiji Pink. They might use a more coarser grain uh, like let's say the Ocean Direct that I used on uh, my little uh, nine gallon nap. And also depending strategically where, where you put your um, wave makers, your power heads, if you put them too close to the bottom, then you are gonna have an issue with sand being blown away. But if you can strategically place them, you shouldn't have any problem. Also, these sands can be mixed. Any of these sands can be mixed. So you can put like a fine grain, like start, with uh, some fine grain sand on the bottom, and then you can mix it with a, a thicker uh, sand grain, like the Ocean Direct or, or other uh, sands that are available out there in the market. Another thing that I thought I'd mention is, uh, although these sands uh, already have um, bacteria, the bacteria is dormant. Uh, right now, if I was to touch these bats, you'll see there, there's liquid, there's, uh, it, it's, it's wet and it's, uh, it has a dormant bacteria. Now, once you put this sand and you put it, you know, you put the salt water, it activates it, it uh, activates the uh, bacteria. Now, uh, one thing that I thought that I mentioned, uh, let's say you have, in this case, uh, 
let's say you have like two two bags of live uh, sand. You have one bag that is not live, or you have one bag that's live and one that is not live. No problem. The uh, bag that has the live bacteria, that bacteria will eventually colonize with the sand that wasn't live, and it will uh, turn into a complete substrate of, of a live biological bacteria. And then getting into the biological part of it, uh, all these sands, not only do they help you with a biological load, uh, due to the fact that, as I was mentioning before, they already have uh, biological bacteria which will be activated once I put the salt water. So that'll help the process when it comes to uh, cycling and curing your rocks. Although you should add some, you should add some bacteria uh, to the water so it rapidly colonizes your life rocks. But at the same token, uh, um, uh, substrate uh, does have calcium, so that will also help you with the bu buffering of your water parameters, like let's say your alkalinity and your pH and your calcium. That'll be uh, fundamental and a good plus when it comes to using these type of sands. So that's basically what I wanted to bring up uh, today in a nutshell. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it educational. If you did, well, just hit the thumbs up and hit the like button. And if so, share it with your fellow YouTubers or make a comment. And if you like, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. And next week, you're going to notice there's a little bell. If you hit that bell, it'll activate uh, the uh, notification button. So every time I put a video, you'll be the first one to be notified that I just uploaded a video. So I do want to thank you very much. And like I say on the end of all my videos, happy reefing. Thank you. Bye-bye.